Hello again, non-existent audience, and welcome back to the Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I'm Paragon Saber, and I'm just going to start this time. So, last time we, uh, of course, saw some more carnage occur. Most notably, we saw Sarohan lose some of its European territories to uh, a counterattack by Wallachia and Serbia. Uh, that enabled by a war against Mentessa and Kandar that saw them lose things like Burgas and Bega. So Sarahan now in two pieces, but uh, still around. Byzantium lost Constantinople sometime early last episode, but still hanging on in Castoria through the grace of Serbia. They actually uh, are also allied with Epirus, which has taken up residence on Corfu. And uh, Sarahan actually guaranteeing the Byzantines, though so, that will do little good if, say, Venice comes knocking. Venice, being the tag that has taken over most of the eastern Adriatic, cleaning up the last remnants of Hungary and eating the resultant Croatian spawned tag. <laughs> well, that was not well said, but uh, regardless, Croatia was a bit stronger than this. They're not now because Venice wanted their land. Venice uh, enjoying property all the way down to the North Peloponnese. Maria no longer in Venice's trade league, likely to follow. Over in the east, the emperor... Still Wu, uh, who has consolidated most of eastern China, but uh, probably in trouble if that low mandate has anything to add. Uh, I don't think they're quite at the stage where anybody could just up and take it. For example, I think Qi would still get crushed if they wanted the mandate, but uh, Wu has done a bit better than a lot of his fellows in getting tributaries, but still losing a lot of mandate and... Uh, as that continues to fall, they're likely to get more and more vulnerable. Still a lot of high development land over here, and they certainly can't lose all of that in one single war for the mandate, so uh, we'll just see how it goes. Korea hasn't really done much since they were a great power. They lost a bit of this uh, in some wars earlier. I'm pretty sure they had all the way up, he uh, up here at some point. But Ashikaga has continued to look very strong. They're down to only two daimyos, those being Akamatsu and Wasugi. As soon as those two are gone, Japan will be united under the guidance of the Ashikaga Shogunate. Let's go ahead and get started again. I didn't look much at India last time, but uh, we're seeing, again, a lot of this looking rather consolidated. Uh, Bahman is still strong in central India. Do have an army of 30,000, but uh, they haven't been able to do much against Madurai in the south, who has a pretty equal army and might look to challenge Bahmani hegemony. Uh, we did see Vijayanagar is gone. Their last province of North Kanara actually going to Habsan, which is a spawnable tag, I think, originating from Ethiopians, perhaps? Not 100% sure, but regardless, that does exist. It is a fun little purple color. It is a vassal of Bahmanis. Bengal also looking pretty strong. They got themselves up to great power status for a little bit, but were eclipsed presumably by institutional uh, issues. Gondwana is out again. They started off as a vassal to Malwa, one of the ones that I wasn't able to release, and uh, at one point they were released and have done well for themselves. They are allied with only Baglana, who is where? Ah, over here. But they are guaranteed by uh, Bahmanis, which ensures that, at the very least, Bengal won't be able to just swoop in and eat them with little issue. Persia is still the man in, uh, well, really, they're kind of the man in Asia. Though, of course, their influence not extending far out east, but uh, they've beaten Syria pretty harshly in consecutive wars. Syria once looking pretty strong, but now only able to muster about a third of what Persia can throw at them. So this is just going to take a couple more wars beating them down for uh, Persia to usurp the Middle East. Persia also having taken things like Bozak now have good inroads into uh, Western Anatolia and likely have ambitions in that area as well. Actually, can I check that diplomatically? Interesting. Persia actually not setting any of these provinces as vital interest. Instead, the only one being Guriev, 
Uh, that being one of Russia's provinces. Russia's only province, in fact, on the Caspian Sea. Actually, not a great province, only three development, but uh, Persia, of course, rivaled to Russia, as well as Spain and Great Britain. So, uh, distance not really having much of an impact there for them to be rival to Great Britain, of all tags. Probably the European power that is least able to get to them. Kind of ironic. Kind of funny. Righty then, looks like we have a bit of a tangle going on over here. We see Poltava occupied by Ryazan. Ryazan is at war with Russia, at the very least. They are at war with Odiev, Imeritia, and Russia. I think that will be an end of Ryazani independence, though Russia actually uh, handing a lot of these occupations over to Odiev. Ryazan itself occupied by the Russians. Uh, ODF might give that over. We'll see. Regardless, they did full annex Moldavia in that war they had with them earlier, so... ODF, uh... Again, looking good. Hard to tell where their border ends and Nitra's begins. Uh, their color's quite similar. ODF's a little lighter shade of blue, of course. We do see yet another round of Bulgarian separatists. Valakia not able to deal with them alone, so, uh... Really, it seems like the thing with Bulgaria is if they're not underneath the Ottomans with all of their uh, unrest-reducing ideas, they're not likely to be kept down. I mean, I think this is the fourth or fifth round of Bulgarian separatists we've seen during this game. Things have been very quiet down here in the French region after since France itself was wiped out by the combined efforts of Gascony, Austria, Brittany, and uh, formerly Castile, now Spain, of course. It's just been an uneasy stalemate, I think. Gascony still looking pretty strong, though uh, still weak enough to be guaranteed by Spain. Themselves guaranteeing Provence. Uh, if Austria wants to make some more gains, that would probably be the place to do it. Though Normandy uh, eminently attackable, I'm surprised no one has done that yet. Even Brittany could pretty easily snipe them, as their only ally is Augsburg. Eh, not sure. Regardless, Normandy's still alive for now. Picardy also alive, but a vassal of Great Britain. Well done on the Brits' part. Do you see that uh, Luxembourg, one of the release tags at the beginning, has done well enough for itself? They've actually taken over Rethel, though uh, now having to deal with some Protestant zealots. I'll uh, check the progress of the Reformation in a little bit, but uh, for now, you know, Luxembourg, kind of privileged. Uh, it does get released into the HRE and so enjoys Austria's protection. Same thing goes for Barr, who I believe held Namur at one point, but uh, that taken by Austria. In the central HRE, we do see Trier having grown pretty strong. They've taken Nassau and Mainz. Mainz usually an elector, but uh, that elector gone for now. Would appear that Würzburg was given that in place of Mainz. All of the other starting electors still alive, though. Uh, no, excuse me. Yeah, no, Cologne is still around. Interestingly... We have Brandenburg and Bohemia backing Portugal, of all tags. Did I see one more? Yeah. Saxony, Brandenburg, and Bohemia all backing Portugal as the emperor, despite the fact that Portugal is perhaps the weakest that it could possibly get. I mean, I'm only seeing them on the Azores right now, but uh, that's what the religious split will do to you. Rather surprised that they're not supporting one of themselves. I think uh, Brandenburg would be a lot better as Emperor than Portugal, but uh, that's their choice. The lines have been drawn for the League War. Things uh, set up. We'll, we'll see how that falls. We do have Austria and Great Britain as the respective leaders of the Leagues. Notables over on the Catholic side, including Brabant, who's a pretty strong uh, inter-HRE tag. Uh, 
Hungary still exists in some manner. Looks like that being in Toronto, they're over on the Catholic side. I uh, do see Toulouse over here. Poland, a pretty good member for that league. Sweden, a member of the Catholic League, of all things. Uh, Sweden's still alive up here in Jokmuk. Usually, Sweden being on the Catholic side would uh, be a little bit more of an event, but none of these tags being all that much of a threat. Really, the main three being Austria, Brabant, and Poland. Though, uh, the rest of these guys can uh, throw some considerable numbers at the others. The Protestant side really looking stronger, though, in my opinion. We see guys like Great Britain over here. We see Naples. Naples, uh, not a great power anymore, but still strong. We see Venice. We see... Brandenburg. We see Russia. Yeah, looks like Thuringia got spat out again. Thuringia, a tag that starts under Saxony. I released them at the start. Saxony ate them pretty quickly, but now spat out again by one of Saxony's wars, and uh, keeping alive by allying with Bohemia mostly, but also Hesse and Silesia. And in a, uh, Venice's Trade League. Venice's Trade League growing massive. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 people in Venice's Trade League. Well done by them. They've even managed to snipe one of Novgorod's trading cities, the city of Viborg, uh, add them to their trade league. Novgorod still getting, uh, still leading a trade league of Holstein, the city of Perkanma, and it's a city of Viborg. Uh, perhaps Venice released a trading city of its own then? I, I could have swore that I saw the city of Viborg in there. That'd be city of uh, Visoki. Alright, makes sense. They actually blend in with uh, Venice pretty well. We see both Vizoki and Cremona released as trading cities by the Venetians. And Brescia, formerly a Venetian territory, actually going to Siena. Siena looking very good up here. They start as one province minor. That not the case anymore. Florence, formerly a Neapolitan vassal, was set free in that war with Austria, presumably, and uh, now just guaranteed by Naples and Siena. We've seen a lot of trading cities spat out this game. Uh, did mouse over Finnmark in that one. They're uh, still alive, but not in a trading league by virtue of having two provinces. They actually lead a trade league with Gotland. Good for them. Gotland, uh, a tag that's just probably not going to be touched. They can be in wars, but no one... Uh, maybe not big, en uh, big enough naval power to do anything, uh, but... Uh, regardless, haven't seen any landings on Gotland, and uh, they've retained their sovereignty quite easily. We did see they were involved in more with Poland, Lithuania, and Nitra, and uh, I see Brandenburg over there sieging things down on them. This battle very close, but Brandenburg triumphs, just barely sending back the forces of Nitra, as well as Ansbach and Friesland. I seem to recall Ansbach being... Uh, Huh. Now, Ansbach is a junior partner of Brandenburg and was helping them out in that battle. So who all is, say, Poland fighting? That'd be Mazovia. Oof. Poland finally uh, hoping to take that, I'm guessing. Mazovia, Brandenburg, Ansbach, Gotland, Saxony, and Friesland. So Poland losing its ally in Saxony for this war. But Mitra, pretty strong. Basically, uh, basically Hungary. The Hungary is still alive in Toronto. I'm guessing uh, Nitra might want to take that in the future, though. Hungary semi protected by Sweden, Provence, Magdeburg, but actually. Huh. Has joined Novgorod's trade league. So I guess that would be a bit messy if, uh, if Nitra wanted to try to take that, but I think they could do it if they really wanted to. We see Saruhan getting collapsed upon by Mentessa and Kandar again, and the Bulgarian Separatists beating Wallachia, so, uh, <laughs> might see Bulgaria yet again. We see Crimea occupied by Kasim, but almost all of Kasim occupied by Theodoro. Theodoro going up as far as Ryazan as well. What would this war be? 
That would be the Theodorian Conquest of Tin. Well, things looking pretty good for Theodoro in this war. Interesting how Mansoor is occupied by Trebizond of uh, all people. They can't even core that at this point. Uh, at one point, Kasim did eat the last remnants of Ostrakhan. We saw some Ostrakhani separatists over there. Looks like Kasim dealt with them. But now they're having to deal with Theodoro, and that's not going uh, nearly as well. Odiev uh, made, off like, or made out like a bandit from that earlier war with Ryazan. Ryazan not handed over to the Russians. They're probably not happy about that, but uh, Odiev getting Tula and Yelets. See Lithuania getting close to full occupied. Vilni uh, Vilnius also down. Nitra having to deal with some noble rebels. That looked like a pretty even war at the start, but this Lubikian Condottieri army really helping out the uh, Brandenburgians. That said, Nitra and Poland managing to catch Mazovia's stack, but things heavily in the Greater Alliance's favor there. Great Britain still doing its thing, still likely colonizing. Yep, they have uh, managed to create the colonial uh, nation of Newfoundland and are moving on. Interesting how they've chosen to colonize Tadasak instead of uh, Stadacona. Stadacona, a, the uh, estuary of the St. Lawrence River, which is pretty, uh, pretty good for the similarly named Gulf of St. Lawrence trade node. Good outlet for trade from the New World. Not quite as good as, say, the Caribbean, which is still completely untouched by Europeans. A lot of rich land there, just ready for the uh, for the colonizing. Austria has been rather quiet lately. Uh, they have managed to get a personal union over the Elector Palatine, the Palatinate. Uh, still allied with Tunis, also holding down alliances with Cologne, Milan the Pope, and Sardinia, but uh, you'd think they might be throwing their weight around a bit more having taken all of this rich French land, but they haven't done much, at least since uh, ending France. Can't help but wonder how long Brandenburg's going to be able to pay for this stack unless Lubick uh, gave it to him for free. I mean, that's got to be Lubick's entire army, aside from this little one cannon. Is that a cannon? Yeah, one cannon over here in Stad. Lubick uh, doing very well for itself. Able to consolidate a large portion of northern Germany. Well, may maybe not a massive portion, but uh, a portion of it. I mean, enough to field a 16k army with a 331, so there's that. Things continuing to not look good for Poland, Lithuania, and Nitra. A pretty big engagement occurring over here. Poland actually catching Brandenburg and perhaps the Condottieri. Ah, uh, no. Looks like Saxony was in there as well. I'm not sure who all was doing what there, but regardless, both Poland and Nitra's army sent off Brandenburg far enough into the game by now that they probably have some Prussian ideas online. Yep, they do have army professionalism that plus 20% mor morale of armies, and they also have the Goose Step online, 20% infantry combat ability. They're not full space marines yet, but they're uh, they're getting pretty close. They do still have this tiny Pomeranian enclave in the middle of them that is uh, protected by Novgorod's Trade League, as well as by Sweden, East Frisia, Magdeburg, Trier, and Saruhan. They can have some pretty uh, odd alliances occurring there. It is now Mentessa with a foothold in Europe. They've taken Adirn from Saruhan, and Saruhan itself also taken by Mentessa. Kandar given a lot of nothing in that war. Byzantium, still alive. Really, I think Venice could eat them any time they want. Uh, they did eat Morea, but uh, I, I guess Serbia is enough of a boogeyman that they don't want to do it, or perhaps Venice just focused elsewhere. Looks like Croatia actually ended up with another province. Don't think whom was under their control. 
Uh, perhaps Venice released another trading city, which broke off? Or, uh, I don't know. Regardless, that was Venice's. It's now Croatia's. Uh, I'm guessing Venice will want to clean that up eventually. That's a little bit of border gore there. And how long is this war going to go on? Poland, Lithuania, and Nitra very obviously losing this. Uh, Mzovia likely to grow again. <laughs> wonder if we will, uh, wonder if we won't see an AI back to the Piast. Mentioned that earlier, and the Piast still on their throne, a perfectly average ruler, three three three. But uh, Mzovia not looking bad on tech. Look like thirteen ten twelve. I think thirteen is the uh, current technology. We do see Spain on military tech thirteen. I'm going to guess that. Uh, uh, Spain probably one of the more advanced nations. I'll check the ledger. Let's uh, let's look at technology Would that be under economy or is it just under country nations technologies? There we go uh, We do see the Palatinate with tech 14 in both ad admin and Diplo and we see Alsus with military techs 14 So uh, I, I wonder if that's the next tech. that's a little bit ahead of time. Do you see Nitra managing to catch a Mazovian stack alone, but only for a little bit? Brandenburg. Actually, not Brandenburg, but uh, actually Gotland and uh, Saxony coming in to reinforce, as well as the Lubeckian stack there. Those Kandachieri, uh, that arrangement now ended, so. It's still possible for uh, Poland and Nitra to turn the tide here, but it won't be easy. And they keep taking pretty bad engagements. Mitra must be behind in military tech. I mean, they're military tech 13. Actually, Mazovia on 12. Um, well, what are their ideas looking like? Really, it seems that the only Mazovian uh, good military idea is actually in their traditions. They have plus 10% cav combat ability. The rest of those... <laughs> Honestly, the rest of those looking like pretty awful ideas. <laughs> That's rough, but can't argue with them too much. They're thriving. Uh, perhaps perhaps Saxony has some better military ideas? Uh, Saxony on tech 12. How is Nitra losing these? They have a military tech advantage. Poland doesn't, but and I didn't see Brandenburg involved in that last one. We now see Odiev uh, pretty well occupied by Novgorod. Or perhaps by some people in Novgorod's trade league, but it looks like Russia has struck again. What would this war be? That'd be the Russian conquest of Tver. Yep, no surprise there. Uh, Russia, formerly Muscovy, looking to consolidate its lands, especially those that are actually reaching down into uh, the heartland of Russia. And there's that war over. Seems that Brandenburg has taken no tech. Uh, looks like Mazovia has taken Premichil, Luo, and Rhone from Nitra. Don't think Poland lost anything else, though. Uh, did Lithuania? Doesn't look like, uh, look like it. I seem to remember them having uh, an exclave in Rhone. But, uh, regardless, it's Mazovia's now. That Brandenburgian alliance helping out Mazovia quite a bit. Novgorod having to siege down its former trade city. It's kind of sad. Uh, Viborg actually having what appears to be a Hindu, uh, sh yeah, Hindu flag there. Whereas Pirkan Ma having a bit of a shield with a reformed cross, I think. Finnmark having a Swomanusko type uh, tag there. I don't know how Sweden's really been able to survive. Uh, they're allied with Hungary, Cologne, Magdeburg, and Pomerania. I guess all of those together could throw a force at somebody, but really, they could just do that whenever they wanted. Uh, Kandar is at war with Serbia. How has that occurred? That would be the Kandari Jihad against Wallachia. Oh boy. We have a bit of a uh, deus volt over here from the Muslims. That, that's, uh, that's rough. 
Bulgarian Separatists still going about, and, uh... Yep. Kandar has now peaced out for Tarnovo and Silistria. So, even more Turkish domains seized in the Eastern Balkans. It appears that they gave uh, Hungary its core of Oltinia back. Hungary once having all of Royal Hungary, all of Transylvania, and all the way down to Silistria, but uh, wiped out by the likes of Venice, Nitra, Poland helping Nitra, and a few others. Lithuania reeling after that war. Uh, they're still in the Union, just barely, but don't even have an army right now. It's pretty rough. Persia has managed to make itself a coalition target. Uh, right now, just Kandar, Karaman, Syria, and Aretna. Those four could not contest Persia, uh, much less Persia and Afghanistan by themselves. But if they were able to get somebody else in there... Well, there, there are no Muslim tags really strong enough to, to really help out. It seems that this coalition is against Sunnis. Perhaps the Mamluks, but even though, uh, even then, the Mamluks in Syria can only raise 45k. Persia a little bit behind Syria on tech, though. I think if the Mamluks join that, they'd have a they'd have a chance. Not a not a big chance, but a chance. Though. Perhaps the Mamluks not with enough A toward Persia to join that coalition. Not sure. Persia's ruler... Uh, Persia has a regency council. Uh, perhaps their previous ruler, one of those uh, ruler types that can find itself with coalitions. I know the AI generally tries to avoid them. Uh, that appears to be Dith Martian's troops all the way down in Austrian France. What's going on here? They are at war with Milan in the Milanese reconquest of Cremona. So they are at war with Milan, Magdeburg, Austria, the Palatinate, and Sardinia. That looking like a pretty big war. I'm guessing uh, Venice involved in this. Yep, so who all is Austria fighting? City of Cremona, Thuringia, the Knights, Württemberg, Dithmarschen, Munster, Frankfurt, Aachen, Silesia, Hesse, Alsace, Venice, and the city of Visoki. It's a lot of tags there, but uh, Austria, probably the equal of eight or nine of them at the least, and if they fail to get their armies together, that's just going to be uh, really easy pickings for the Austrian alliance. They can just go and uh, siege down the one province miners and take their money. And a lot of those being trading cities or in a trade league means that uh, they're probably not going to be all that poor. Nobody else in that coalition as of yet. Ethiopia has linked up its provinces down here, taking Jazan, I think uh, also from Hejaz. And now going after Oman. Oman has consolidated a lot of southern Arabia, but uh, with no allies, and that has drawn Ethiopia's attention. Guessing Ethiopia will want to go after things like Adan, that uh, center of trade in the Gulf of Aden node. Looks like Shamar just took a province off of ha uh, Haasa. And Kiva continuing to grow, this time at Uzbek's expense. The Siberian Khanate uh, alive up here. I think they were eaten pretty early. Regardless, they're, uh, they're alive now, and they're alive. Perm's territory kind of cut in half by uh, Bashkortostan and Bashgird. Sibir kind of protected by their tributary status to Uzbek, but can't help but wonder how long that'll last. Novgorod actually still owns Ustvim over here, but that's about it. They lost a lot to Russia in that war. They appear to have lost Tver, Torzhok, Tikvin, uh, I think Kolm and Luki, White Karelia, Soroka, Kargopol, and Novgorod uh, severely reduced at this point but they've made it almost a century beyond what they made it in the original timeline, so, uh, and put up a good fight against formerly Muscovy, now Russia, a couple of those times. 
whatever that war between Kasim and Theodoro was about, it's over, and with no apparent gains for Theodoro, I think that was supposed to be a conquest of tin. Regardless, that was the timer. The year is now 1570. I will take a glance at the great powers early next time, see if those have changed. But for now, I have been Paragon Saber, and this has been The Great Partition. Thank you for watching.